Welcome to Shraf's technical series. In today's session, we will discuss the REST API router controller services. In the previous sessions, if you recall, we discussed the Boost Beast REST API server. In this session, we showed how to call the REST API service using curl. And then at the end of this session, we mentioned that we will implement the services such as MongoDB service and the AWS S3 service. And then we will integrate these services into the REST API server. So that way, we, when we do a REST call, we will hit the MongoDB service, get the data from the MongoDB, and then send it to the client. So after this session, we had two more sessions where we implemented a MongoDB service. Then we implemented AWS S3 service. So we discussed all those in those videos. In this session, we will integrate the REST API server with the services. And then we will follow a framework called uh, MVC. If you know MVC framework, model view controller. But in this uh, REST API, we don't have uh, a view because it's not a UI. So we have a router. The router will include controllers and the controllers will call services. So if you have uh, ASP.NET uh, Web API MVC framework experience or uh, Django experience, you might uh, correlate with that. So we have the HTTP session, which was discussed in HTTP API server session. Then that HTTP underscore session class will call the router class and the router class will contain shared pointers of controllers like this, MongoDB controller, AWS S3 controller, and the controllers will have shared pointers. Uh, the controllers will contain a shared pointer of services like MongoDB service and AWS S3 service. So when we get a REST API call, the HTTP session will send the request to the router the router will parse the parameters and the path in the, UI, uh, in the URL. And then based on the path and the parameters, it will route it to the controller, which has to handle that request. And if it is MongoDB, then it will call the MongoDB service, get the data from MongoDB, and the data will flow back and goes back to the browser. So this is the data flow diagram at the high level. So before we go into the code, we'll have a quick demo. I'll open my VS code. And then, so in today's demo, I'll just show you at the high level. So this is uh, VS code. In the VS code, I have Thunder Client installed. Through Thunder Client, I'm going to make these calls to the MongoDB service. So if you recall from the MongoDB session, we implemented books uh, calls where we put uh, we, where we inserted books, deleted books, updated books. So now we'll do the same from the UR from the rest API. So first I'll uh, do get books, send it. There are no books available, so nothing is sent. Then I'll uh, put books. So I'll I'll post some books. So I'll post book six. I'll post book six and book seven. So if I send that, you got inserted two books were inserted. And then these are the OIDs, object IDs of the two books I inserted. Now let's go back and do the get books. So I'll get only book number six because it's in the parameter. So now I got the book six. Now I'll put books. So for book six, I'm going to append iPhone absorted so to update the book. So if you look here in the get, get call, I had only book six description. Now I'm going to update the description to book six description iPhone absorted. So I'll send it. So uh, the absorted count still shows zero, but it's actually absorted. So let's go back to the get books again and then get book six. 
it should have upserted. So it's upserted. Now I'll go to delete and delete all book, delete book six, delete one, false. So one book deleted. So if I go to get books and then send, then book six should be gone. It's gone. But if I don't have anything here and send, I still have book seven. So with that, we demoed the CRUD operations create, update, request, delete, C R U T. Create, request, update, delete. And if you look here for a quick um, view, so this is the process which is running. Now I'll do a quick put again. I'll put books, uh, I'll post book six and seven again. So if you look here, we have the user authorized. So in the body, we send the, in the authentication headers, we are sending the bearer token. Bearer token is part of the environment. In the test variables, we have bearer token. So we send that. So once you send it, the user is authorized because there was bearer token, then send the request to the background worker. So this is the thread ID. This is the thread which received the request. Then this is the thread which send the work to the background thread. And if you look this one, the thread ID is different. It's CED35, 359, it's B5C. So, so the front end thread has sent the request to the background thread. So it's a different thread which is doing the MongoDB call. And then that MongoDB call, after the backend thread does the process, it will send the response back to the front end thread. So I'm not printing it here, but uh, yeah, it gives you an idea that. So it gives you an idea that the request is being handled by the background thread. Here, if you look, um, so user authorized send processing in background thread request sent. So this is a different thread and this is a different thread. So with that, we demo that the background thread is working. So whenever a request comes in, a front end thread takes the request, parses it, sends it to the background thread. Background thread does the actual call to the database. Since it's blocking, we send it to background thread. Once the data is available, we send it for back to the front end thread. So with that, the demo concludes. We'll go through the code. Source code. I'll show the code in the UI in, in here itself. Uh, it's the same code in the VS Visual Studio code also. Now, if you recall from our main session, the starting session. So if you recall from the Boost Beast REST API server session, we had the thread model. There we discussed about the shared state. The shared state has everything that is needed across the application. So in the shared state, we have uh, created another, uh, we added a shared pointer of the router, which we are discussing to, today. So this router class is in the shared state, in the shared state here. So that's what we did here in the source code. If you go all the way to the bottom, we declared router in the shared state. So uh, if you recall, we have many other things like parser, sessions, and also shared state is our uh, global scope where everything is there. If something has to be protected with a mutex, then we have a mutex here. But in our case, in this router class case, we don't need any mutex. So we don't really use any mutex, but this is where the router is. And using this, we access the router in the application. Now we'll go to the HTTP session class where I'll show you or else we'll go up from here. So this is the Mongo service. So this is the router class. Yep. 
This is the router class in Shrav's uh, namespace. The router class, initial, the router uh, declare um, the constructor. In the constructor, we call an init method, which is a private init method. And then we have a single method at this time, a public uh, method, which takes HTTP verb, what verb it is, and the path from the URL and the body from the request. So this is single method, a public method. And then we have the services like a shared pointers of uh, MongoDB client and MongoDB controller. At this time, we have only MongoDB controller and MongoDB client. But if you look here in the data flow, we had uh, AWS S3 also. In the next session, we will add AWS S3. For today's demo, we, today's demo and session, we just have the MongoDB controller, router.hpp. We have a route function and then the shared pointers of uh, service and controller. Now, Mongo controller.hpp. So the controller, Mongo controller, so this is router.cpp. In the router.cpp, we discussed the router.hpp before. So in router.cpp, we have the init method where we initialize the services. Initialization is just uh, creating the Mongo client and controllers. So we did that. So yeah, here right now we have the URI right in the code, but uh, this has to be a uh, environment variable. We'll uh, plug that in later. So then we have the controller and then the router dot route. So this is the main function where the routing will happen. So we'll get the boost beast HTTP verb, the URI, and the body. We parse the URI. We parse the URI and we get segments from the URI. Now, if the segment starts with MDB, MongoDB, so if you have a URI like this, So see, this is the segment. If you have a URI with, with MDB in the path, then it will be handled by the MongoDB controller. It's MongoDB controller begins with segment. It begins with MongoDB controller. Then for, for this demo, we're just passing, we're not using the body. We're just passing the books as a hard-coded parameter, and then we get the books. Similarly, post, put, delete has to be implemented, so I'll do that in the next session. I'll go through that in the next session. Then MongoDB controller, controller.hpp. The MongoDB controller will implement get, post, put, delete. So each controller will implement HTTP verb, so get will get data, post will post, put, and delete. Now these methods will be implemented in the CPP file. So mongo controller.cpp. So if it is a get call, if it is a get call, you pass it to mongo client, find one, and you pass the data to mongo client. And Mongo client was discussed in uh, CPP Mongo service. So it's the same client. We now plugged in that end to end. So the router will send a message to the controller. Controller will pass it to client. The client will return. Once the client returns, the controller returns. Then the router will receive it. So here, the router will send it back to the HTTP session. So that's the Mongo controller, then we implemented get. In the next sessions, I'll, uh, I'll implement post, put, and delete, and create a separate session for that. Now, this is HTTP session.cpp. HTTP session.cpp was discussed uh, 
in depth in boost beast rest api server so please go through that here i'm going to only touch the location where we use the router so if you look here in the in this uh, a handle request once you get a request from the browser http session will do all this which we already discussed then here we discussed uh, we created a background worker so to the background worker we get the executor of the background worker to that we post some work using a shade pointer of this http session class we should move the request and we do all this which we discussed already so we can uh, skip that for now so session contains shade state which we discussed uh, beginning of this code discussion shade state will have the router so that's how we'll get the router router is a from router we get the route method to the route method we pass the request method whether it is get pull post delete then for now we hard coded the uri but in the next session i will show how to get this value from the request object and then we pass an instance of response body which is a actually not used right now in the next session i'll show how to you how we how we pass the uh, bo uh, body from the request but this is not used in this uh, session yet then whatever return value is from the router we plug it into the response body and that's how we construct the that's how we update the response body then calculate the size of the response body and then using post again boost beast asio boost asio post will get the executor of the http session and then we do a context switch and send the response to the uh, the thread which is handling the http session so that's why that's how you do a context switch back to the front end thread and that thread which was handling the initial request will send the response back to the browser so this code does the context switch and here we use the router so with that i'll conclude this session if you have any questions please reach me out uh, in the discussion section here in the next sessions we will complete the demo complete the discussion of this source code there's a lot more code which uh, was implemented after this so i'll discuss all that source code and then uh, create a separate session on how to create this development environment so you have everything in a single docker container and you can run the uh, run the whole code using this make file so that will be in a subsequent session thank you for, for thank you for watching